Hey guys, Jennifer here with The Family Fudge, and in today's video, I'm sharing four dump and go crock pot meals. Dinners to be exact. These super cozy dinners are perfect for fall and they're kid approved. But the best part about these dump and go meals is that they really are quick and easy to prepare. There's not a lot of chopping involved, nothing has to be pre-cooked, and these slow cooker meals can be ready in just a few hours. They're not the kind that have to cook all day long. Now before we get started, make sure to hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I'm going to be sharing a new recipe video every Friday this month, so let me know in the comments down below what kind of recipes you'd like to see. If you'd like to make these dinners yourself, you can find the full recipes on thefamilyfudge.com. And without further ado, let's get started. First up, I'm going to be making a beef stroganoff. So my recipe makes about six to eight servings, so that's enough to feed my family and have some leftovers. To my slow cooker, I'm going to add about two and a half pounds of beef stew meat. This is chuck meat, and I love it because it's already cut for me. And I can usually find this meat at my grocery store for a really good price. To my meat, I'm also going to be adding one chopped up onion. I'm using a purple onion because that's what I have on hand, but you really could use any onion that you've got. Just gonna get all of those in there and try not to spill them. And now for the controversial mushrooms. I say that because I know some people really like them and some people really don't. So this part is totally up to you. You don't have to put in the mushrooms if you don't like them. Now personally, I really like mushrooms, but I'm only gonna add about half of this container because that's, that's plenty. Next, I'm going to be adding this cream of chicken and mushroom soup. Now you can use any cream of soup that you prefer or you could even make your own but this dish is all about being quick and easy to throw together, so I'm just gonna use the canned stuff. Next, I'm adding a quarter cup of a Worcestershire sauce, and finally, some salt and pepper to taste. So that is everything that I need to put into the crock pot for now. Now I'm just gonna give it a big stir until it's all combined. Cover it with the lid, and then cook it on high for five hours, or until the meat is nice and tender. Okay, now this is looking nice and creamy already, but I feel like if you're making stroganoff, there's gotta be some sour cream involved, right? I'm gonna go ahead and add eight ounces of sour cream directly into the crock pot, but if you wanted to, you could definitely swap out the sour cream and use Greek yogurt instead. Totally up to you on that. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in, and at this point, it's pretty much ready to go, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on warm while I prepare the egg noodles. Egg noodles are definitely my first choice to go along with this, but you could also use rice. That would be excellent as well. Now I can go ahead and spoon this over the egg noodles and it is smelling so good, you guys. Look at that creamy sauce. I'm gonna finish it off with a sprinkling of chopped parsley and a little dollop of sour cream. Up next, I'm going to be making some super creamy slow cooker mac and cheese. This recipe is completely low maintenance. You don't have to pre-cook the noodles or make a white sauce. It's simple, but it's delicious. Now for my mac and cheese, I like to start with one pound of uncooked elbow noodles. And you guys, these are the Jumbo Ridge Noodles. I really prefer these when making mac and cheese in the slow cooker. And that's because they don't tend to fall apart as quickly as smaller noodles do. And that's probably my number one tip when it comes to making mac and cheese in the slow cooker. Now, before I add anything to my crock pot, I definitely want to spray it with some nonstick spray. Of course, you could also use a slow cooker liner if you'd like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add this entire box of noodles directly to my crock pot. And like I said, these are uncooked. Next, I'm gonna be adding four tablespoons of salted butter, followed by four ounces of cream cheese. And I went ahead and cut this into cubes. Next comes the salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna take it easy on the salt at this point. I'm just gonna be adding one teaspoon. I can always add more later if it needs it, but I don't wanna go overboard. And then I'm also adding a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Next, I'm adding three cups of 2% milk, 
and then I'm adding half a cup of cream. Now you could go ahead and substitute this for half and half, but it won't be quite as creamy if you do that. Very last thing I'm going to be adding at this point is some ground mustard or powdered mustard. This is totally optional, you don't have to have this, but I think that the mustard powder in there actually makes the cheese taste cheesier. So I always add about one teaspoon. Right now I'm just going to mix it all together and then pop on the lid. I'm gonna cook this on low for about two hours or until the pasta is tender, and I am gonna make sure to stir it halfway through that cooking time. So now that the two hours are up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that lid and give it a stir. And this is looking really good already. The noodles are nice and soft, but they're not mushy. They're not quite done cooking yet, and that's because I still have to add in all of the cheese. Now, I would recommend using at least three cups of cheese for this. You definitely could use more if you'd like. And what kind of cheese is totally up to you. I'm just using three cups of sharp cheddar cheese. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all together. I'm just using a little bit of this cheese for topping it. Now I'm gonna pop my lid back on and cook it for about 10 more minutes or until the cheese is completely melted. This looks so good, you guys. And you can see there's even some little brown bits along the side. Those are my favorite. I love the little burnt bits. Now, like I said, this mac and cheese is definitely a crowd pleaser. It actually reminds me a lot of the new mac and cheese they're selling at Chick-fil-A. It tastes very similar to that. But again, you guys, make sure to check those noodles as you're cooking this. You do not want to overcook them. And now I'm moving on to some delicious cranberry meatballs. These meatballs are seriously good. Even my pickiest eater asks for seconds of these, and that is saying something. And don't worry, you guys, if you're not a cranberry fan, you'll still love these. They're a lot like a sweet and sour meatball. I think these are perfect for an easy dinner or to take to a fall get-together. For this recipe, I'm gonna start by making the delicious sauce. And for this, I'm going to need a separate bowl. To this bowl, I'm going to add an entire can of cranberry sauce. And I really prefer the whole berry cranberry sauce here, but you could also use jellied cranberry sauce if that's what you have. I'm gonna break that up just a bit. And then next comes the chili sauce. And I'm gonna be pouring in this entire bottle. Now I know that might sound a little crazy, but I'm gonna be making a lot of meatballs. And even though this does say chili sauce, it's really not spicy at all. Like I said, even my pickiest eater loves these meatballs. She would not eat them if they were too spicy. I'm gonna be adding one tablespoon of brown sugar. And then lastly, I'm also adding two tablespoons of orange juice followed by two tablespoons of cornstarch. I am gonna be working with frozen meatballs for this dish, and I don't want them to make my sauce really runny, so this cornstarch will definitely help thicken it up a bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this all together and then set it to the side. Now before I add anything to my slow cooker, I definitely want to use some nonstick spray here. Sometimes that sauce can get a little bit sticky. Then to my slow cooker, I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my entire bag of frozen meatballs. This is three pounds of meatballs. So like I said, this will feed a crowd perfect for parties. You could even turn this into freezer meals and you can really use any meatball that you like. My first choice would be turkey meatballs because they go really well with cranberry sauce. Next, I'm gonna pour all of this sauce directly onto the meatballs, then pop on the lid and cook on low for three hours. And check these out, you guys. That cornstarch in there really helped to thicken up the sauce. Now you definitely could serve these just as is if you're having a party, maybe put out some toothpicks. But if I'm serving these for dinner, I really like to spoon them over some rice. That way the rice can absorb some of that yummy sauce. It is such a good combination. And then even though my kids aren't always huge fans, I also like to serve this with a side of steamed broccoli. These are so good and so easy. Definitely give these ones a try.
Okay guys, now I think I might have saved the best for last. This tortellini soup is definitely a favorite of mine and it really reminds me of a soup that you might find at the Olive Garden. The broth is nice and creamy, but it's still light. It's not all thick and gloppy. This only takes about five minutes to throw together, so it's perfect if you're short on time. Now this recipe is a true dump and go. You don't have to chop anything. You just throw it into the slow cooker and you're good to go. The first thing I'm going to do is add about half of this bag of cheese tortellini. That's about one pound. Cheese tortellini is definitely my favorite, but you could also use spinach or chicken or whatever you prefer. I'm just gonna dump those right into there. And I'm just eyeballing it really. This is gonna be enough to feed all of my kids and there might be some leftovers. We'll have to see about that. Next, I'm going to be adding several handfuls of fresh spinach. Now, it might look like I'm adding a lot of spinach, but it's really going to cook down. My kids are totally fine with it, so it's cool. Next, I'm going to be adding a large 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And these ones have basil and garlic and oregano in them. So they're going to add a lot of flavor to our soup. And I'm going to pour in this entire can, juice and all. Up next, it's time to add some broth. Now, normally I would use chicken broth for this, but since I already have this beef broth, I'm going to go ahead and use that. Either one's going to work just fine. And if you wanted to, you could even use a veggie broth. I'm gonna add in this entire carton, which is four cups. Now since this is a soup, I'm gonna need a little bit more liquid than just the broth. So I'm also gonna be adding two cups of water in here. If you wanted your soup to be on the thicker side, you could probably just leave that out. Now, did I mention that this soup is going to be extra creamy? Well, it gets its creaminess from the cream cheese. I'm adding an entire block of cream cheese into here, and I do wanna go ahead and chop it into cubes just so that it will melt a lot easier and faster in the soup. Now because I want this soup to have lots of flavor, I'm also gonna be adding in two teaspoons of Italian seasoning and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir this all up, add my lid on, then I'm gonna cook this on high for about three to four hours. And that really just depends on what kind of tortellini you end up using. But basically when the tortellini is done, your soup is done. Now before I serve this, I do like to stir it up quite a bit just to make sure there aren't any lumps of cream cheese left in there. Then I just add a couple of ladles to my bowl. And then right before I serve it, I like to sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese right on the top. If you'd like even more awesome recipes, you can click on the video right here. And if you'd like to check out my fall home tour, you can click on the link right there. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in tomorrow's video.